I've been gardening since I was eight years old and over the years I've learned a few tricks of the trade that you don't often see. Hi, I'm Ben and I'm going to share 10 of my favourite tips that will help you to get the most from your gardening. All of the ideas I'm about to share will help you save valuable time, effort and money. So let's dig straight in. Paths help us to move about the garden, of course, but they can also serve as valuable spillovers from your growing areas. So I'm using wood chips here, and that's purposeful because it means that plants like cucumbers and zucchini or courgettes that lollop over can potentially make better use of this space here and even root into it and give you a better crop, making you achieve more in the same space. And then there's arches like these here that go over my paths. These two arches replace my homemade vegetable arch that I had last growing season. Just like then, I'll be growing climbing crops up them, starting with these climbing beans here. They will grow up and over and then cover the top of the path like this and dangle down for easy harvesting. Not only will it make a stunning feature, but it will also mean that the crops that are growing up it will grow away from the rest of the beds so they're not overcrowding them. I took these soft root cuttings back in the autumn. To help them root, to speed them along, I used a hormone rooting gel, but you could use honey as a natural alternative. Honey, you see, is a natural antiseptic. Just dip the ends of your cutting into the honey and it'll help to keep them clean and thereby help with their rooting. Then push them down into your potting mix. Better still, wet the end of the cutting just in water and then dip into cinnamon powder before dipping the end into your honey. What the cinnamon powder does is it acts as an antifungal agent while also stimulating those much sought after roots. I store my seeds in my trusty seed box with them separated according to month with a piece of card. But I'm loving this idea I've recently seen, and that's to use an old photo album or CD wallet to store your seeds instead. Just pop them into their sleeves and you can review what seeds you've got at the flip of a page like this. And to see when the sow by date is, simply copy the sow by date from the back of the packet onto the front of the packet. And because this can just fold shut like that, you can store this in a bookshelf out of the way. And bookshelves often tend to be cooler and drier places, perfect for storing your seeds. We all know that beneficial insects, such as aphid munching, hoverflies and lacewings, as well as pollinators like bees and butterflies, are part and parcel of a thriving garden. So it makes sense to grow flowers that are nectar and pollen rich to attract them. And that includes flowering herbs such as chives, parsley and basil. But one of the very easiest ways to put your garden on the bug-eyed map is to let biennial vegetables flower. Now that's vegetables like onions, leeks, as well as many brassicas like this beautiful kale here. This is just as beautiful, in my opinion, as any ornamental flowers. And earlier on in the summer, it's a real attraction for all sorts of pollinators. The delicate lacy blooms of carrots are loved by just about every insect, while pom-pom-like onion and leek flowers are swarmed by industrious bees. Hey, and look, if the potential buggy bonanza wasn't enough, remember that they will eventually set seed and then you can save some of your own seed to trim your seed bill. If you're looking for some emergency protection because, say, a late frost threatens, then you can just use a pot. And I prefer a terracotta pot simply because it's nice and heavy and there's no risk of it being toppled or blowing away. Keep it in place overnight, but of course, once the risk of frost is gone, be sure to lift it up. Use old plastic bottles to protect vulnerable or recently planted seedlings against the cold. If it's going to be windy, just make sure to anchor them into place so they don't blow away. Here in the raised bed garden, I like to plant my crops in a block formation. It just works better with these smaller raised beds. Now, a clever idea is to use a muffin tin. Yes, a muffin tin. I've sneaked these out the kitchen, so I'm hoping no one notices. Now, they obviously come in different shapes and sizes. And the idea is you simply press it down onto the ground like that, lift it up, and then you've got a series of depressions and you can use those to space out your seeds or plants as appropriate. Something like this 
larger muffin tin here. They're about six inches or 15 centimeters apart, which is great for planting something like, say, spinach. I've got these smaller ones here, and I'm gonna use them to plant some uh, dwarf beans. So I've made my little depressions. I know that these ones here are about eight inches apart, and they're about three to four centimeters apart. So I'm gonna miss out this middle row here, and then I can just plant one dwarf bean in every hole, hole like that along the row. Then another option is to mark up a tool handle or just a bamboo cane. So put the measuring tape against it and then mark out a key integers along the tape and then you've got a always at hand way of measuring out your seeds. I'm going every inch here or two and a half centimetres and that's about right for so many seeds. There it is complete and I've made every fourth one slightly longer because that's four inches or 10 centimetres. Much of the water we use around the home can be used to water our plants too. So for example, water used to clean, boil or steam vegetables can be left to cool down and then happily watered around your crops. Water that you've used to wash the dishes is fine too, so long as you have used an ecologically friendly plant-based dish soap. Use it around ornamentals, on lawns, or at the base of fruit bushes, canes and trees, but don't put it into contact with any part of the plant you're likely to eat, just in case there are any fatty residues in it. Of course, we should be doing all we can to save as much rainwater as possible. It's better for our plants and it's free. Now, you'll need to keep your collected rainwater covered to stop it getting full of bugs or turning green with algae. But make sure the cover is quite loose fitting because that way you can dip your watering can into the water and fill it up a lot quicker than waiting for it to drain out at the bottom. Look at that, quick and ready to go. Use plastic bottles as reservoirs as well. Cut the bottom off and then keep the cap on and then just push holes into the cap at regular intervals. This will slow the water down. And now when you come to water, you can simply fill the reservoir up with water and then move on. The cap will have the water drain out really, really slowly, delivering the water to exactly where it's needed, down at the roots. And also because you're putting that water further down, you're keeping the surface dry so there's less water lost due to evaporation. And you can find more ideas for reusing old plastic bottles in our video on just that, and I'll pop a link to it down below. A little bonus tip on the subject of watering. Use old sponges to stuff into the bottom of pots before adding your potting mix. Now this serves two purposes. First of all, it covers the drainage holes so less of the potting mix comes out of the bottom. But more importantly, it sucks up excess moisture and then makes it available to the plant roots as and when it needs it. You can then water your plant and the plant will need watering much less often, saving you valuable time. When it comes to labelling your plants, you've of course got lots of options. Plastic labels are fantastic and I often use pencil rather than pen because it means I can simply rub them clear like that with my eraser. If you prefer to use pen, you can just leave them out in the sun to bleach or use a bit of sandpaper just to rough off the written text. I think splashing out on plant labels is a bit of a waste of money when you can just make your own. Use any white material like a yoghurt pot or this ice cream pot here and then just trim them down to size to make your own. You could also try saving popsicle or ice cream sticks. Fragments of broken terracotta pot and small rocks make for an attractive way of labelling permanently planted specimens like herbs. If you're writing onto a pebble or shard of terracotta, then a white chalk pen works really well. Make your own biodegradable pots from newspaper or cardboard tubes. Now we covered this in a recent video, but here's a quick recap. To make a paper pot, fold and then unfold a strip along a piece of newspaper to leave a crease. Roll the newspaper tightly around a jar or cup like this, then fold in the ends to create the pot base pinching along the edges to firm it up. 
Remove the jar, then fold in along the crease you made earlier to firm up the rim of the pot. To make a cardboard pot, simply snip one end at 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock like this, then fold the flaps in on each other to form the base. These pots will of course decompose in the soil, which means there's no need to remove them before planting, which should help avoid root disturbance. Furthermore, as they rot down, they will also add valuable organic matter to the soil. These are a few of my favourite tips, but of course gardening is fertile ground for all manner of ideas, hacks and wow-inducing wisdom. Perhaps you have a tip of your own that you'd like to share. If you do, drop us a comment below and tell everyone. Next week we'll be exploring the sometimes insane world of red hot chilli peppers. Do you want to know the secret behind super spicy peppers? Well, tune in next week or subscribe and turn on notifications so we can let you know as soon as that video is out. In the meantime, do check out these videos for more horticultural hacks to help you get the most from your gardening. I'll catch you next time.